Jason from Troy, New York. What's on your mind, Jason? Um, well, I, I, I wanted to call in for um, mainly to give you some news that hopefully will be good news, which is that partially your libertarian debates were part of, you know, a, a suite of factors, but definitely was a big entry point for me sort of getting away from the new right and sort of becoming more confident in holding leftist politics. Um, because I, I sort of, I feel like I have a very, uh, what's the right word? I think I was very lucky to avoid a trajectory that might have ended in a different life or a different, you know, if things played out differently, I think maybe I could be, have been a proud boy in some other life, you know? Wow. Um, what, like what, wh where were you at that point where the, you, you could have, you, you know, tell me about that moment of that crossroads, I guess. Um, so yeah, parents were very liberal and sort of very democratic party line growing up. Didn't really discuss, um, reasons for political beliefs. And I sort of had a fundamental disagreement with them that was over me not being very religious and then sort of, um, at least particularly my mom valuing me becoming a war mitzvah. But all this to say, I sort of was involved in high school, like sort of primed, I guess, by watching sort of new atheist type uh, things like, you know, old Hitchens clips or, yeah. you know, funnily enough <laughs> to invoke him, but Sam Harris um, and other figures like that, which I think in hindsight, definitely just sort of contributed to, I had like sort of a distaste for religion, but that sort of translates into very easily Islamophobia through the right sort of people like Hitchens and, Sa and Harris sort of like feeding that into this. Um, yeah, they, they are yeah. very anti, um, uh, they are, they are anti-religious, but very anti a specific religion. Uh, Sam Harris, yeah. you will appreciate this. Sam Harris, a lot of his his touring around was sponsored by by brotherhoods at synagogues. You know, there and, <laughs> and he would do a lot of like talks at temples for a guy who was so again. And I wonder how much of it was there, like going like. Incidentally, you guys are all organized around a book that talks about an ocean going apart like this. So I mean, come on. I mean, I don't think that happened uh, so much. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely. Um, I definitely think that's like a major way I was primed. But like, so just like to the, I, I sort I go to college. I'm sort of exploring. So, sort of my mindset is right. Like I've I've heard. I sort of feel like it's like a way that like liberalism kind of failed me in a certain way, and it's also like obviously the radicalization pipeline of like. I start watching a friend recommends a Steven Crowder video, like I'll ch I change my mind, which appeals to that like debate instinct. Yep. And then it's like, okay, introduced to Steven Crowder. And I'm like, Oh, well, Joe Rogan had Steven Crowder on. Let me watch that. And then it's like, okay. So, you know, it's just like the, the cross pollination network that I think has been very uh, well, well established, but you know, until I find myself watching a, a Gavin McInnes video and being like, Oh, you know, kind of funny, but like, I think one of the main ways that kept me from sort of falling deep, deeper in is just having any like meaningful emotional relationship with women in my life. Um, Cause that sort of makes you like balk at when, when things get like hard sexist in like a, right. a Gavin McInnes video or something, it's like, Oh, you get that feeling in your gut. Like, Ooh, I shouldn't be enjoying this. Like they're clear, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, but sort of at that, like the, the, like right at the crossroads where I it was like just prior to COVID but um that was sort of when I was most to the right was like pro just prior to COVID because I'm graduated I'm working a job that I don't really like commuting a lot have very little free time most of my time is commuting or working so I'm listening to a lot of podcasts which just sort of puts you in this like uh continual reaffirmation of like the worst things that you uh i mean if you're watching if you're listening right. to the wrong podcast right um but it was sort of it was definitely like seeing um because i had I, I had gone to some libertarian club meetings in, in college because a friend from high school went to the same college and was running the club 
And some of it I thought was ridiculous. And some of it I was like, yeah, you know, I had a problem with authority growing up with just like my parents and in school. And it's like, oh yeah, it's just this sort of like, you know, being your own person, like screw, screw the big guy. And I felt like I'd heard the left argument, which is my parents like liberalism, which really was no argument, which is just sort of like what the, you know, this is what you're supposed to like, this is, they sort of really, they're very clear party line uh, democratic voters and didn't really give much thought besides that. Um, but so I felt like I'd heard both sides and right. because it's so unsu- unsu- unsubstantive, um, at least my, you know, the liberalism I was experiencing. Yeah. Your um, parents, your parents were just, are, are partisans and you were, uh, yeah. and, 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 and they, and their partisanship was also functioning as one like uh, side of what, uh, presumably uh, appeared as ideological and that just empty partisanship uh, without any type of ideology uh, behind it um, does not stack up well against a, a different ideology because there's no, it, it is all just assertions <laughs> essentially. I mean, um, and so y- y- there's a lot more thought that can go into an ideology, even one that is, um, you know, bad, uh, for, for lack of a better, you know, more nuanced term than one that is just sort of doesn't, doesn't seem to even have any structure. Um, so that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes like the, the media, the right wing media seem like what you needed was an compared- uncle or an aunt who was <laughs> like a leftist or at the very least, like had some type of ideology, uh, some type of reason to vote for, a Democrat or whatever it is. Um, yeah. And the only people in my family who ever seem to think or discuss politics in like the broader, more extended family was, it was very much uh, sort of like people who now are further right more openly, who are like, you know, it, that are, you know, stop the steal people now and like, you know, double Trump voters. But, you know, in Previously, it's like they have the gay wedding cake debate, right? Right. Which is just a perfect example of when your libertarian debate sort of just, it's just like, it's like you can hear that and be like, yeah, like it should be your choice. It's your place. And then when you, when you're like, when you just compare it very directly, it's like, so you're, you're against like the civil rights act. And it's like, well, no, but wait, like, it's just sort of, it falls apart immediately under the first little bit of scrutiny, but it sounds like it's so easy to construct the argument from a, from a place that makes you feel like I've thought about it and I have principles and beliefs. And this is how, like, it, it, it's sort of, it just really, um, well, it's also appealed to like the insecurity. It, it, and, it's uh, also why it's very popular, you know, with, with, with frankly, with young men, uh, who, yeah. you know, and if you get, and, and also the way it's interesting too, the way that they all do stay in their little universe of like, we're all just going to go to our circle jerk, uh, you know, appeal on each other's uh, podcast and reinforce everything and create this notion of like, this is the uh, epistem, uh, uh, what is it? The epistemological uh, circle that we're going to create here. And then if you find yourself in there, everything looks uh, right. Well, listen, um, thank you for calling in. It's really interesting to hear uh, from, uh, from, from folks like you. I would also recommend if you only came to this show late, how did you come to this show? Um, I think it was, I think it was legitimately through just sort of watching uh, like debate content again, when I, I, I got furloughed at the beginning of COVID and just had a bunch of free time. So I just sort of, am like scrolling the, you know, I think I just came across a debate video uh, and it was like a, it, like I think it must have had like debating a libertarian in the title because I'm sure I was just consuming. I used to just like put on debate, like, you know, long political debates or, you know, way, way back, you know, like atheist, theist debates. But um, I, I genuinely think it was just a random uh, recommendation because I was specifically looking for like uh, more content like that of like the, you know, the owning, uh, the, the the opponent type thing because and i i don't know it just it was like enough of uh 
relevance in two different categories, I guess. Well, but just the the very the very last thing I if, if go, I, go I'm not gonna go longer, but just because the point you brought up about like creating their own little uh, universe where everything seems right inside there, I felt that like that was actually true socially. Like I felt like it reinforced itself because it tells me that like. I can't talk about this with my friends who are on the left because they'll reject me. It's like the cancel culture, like fear, but then, which I think is why it's more easy to get people who are socially isolated, but it's like, I had good friends who were more to the left than me, who would have discussions with me when I would espouse more right-leaning opinions. And it's like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, you know, they immediately think I'm a bad person. It's like, but I, I can imagine if you don't have a lot of social connections, you might be like, terrified that that's like a stigma that'll keep you from making friends especially in college and that sort of reinforces only seeking out those that like little tight-knit group even in real life yeah interesting well stay in touch uh i would recommend that you go and uh watch some uh michael um uh brooks stuff uh oh absolutely you know, i absolutely it's not, yeah i found cmbs through your show as well and i oh great i'm a huge uh all right, man. Well, That's thanks for the call. Fan, so. uh, don't be a stranger. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.